Hi, I'm Chris Cornell, and you're watching Toasted. How is everyone? I'm fine. How are you? Good. <laughs> so you came over today, huh? Isn't it? Yeah, we're just from Paris because you live there. Um, I live in Paris, but we actually came from from uh, London because I was doing some interviews in London. So we came there this morning. Came here this morning. How was that, London? Good. You know, I heard you play some acoustic songs instead of four. You played eleven. Did I? It might have been eleven. Yeah, or ten. I, I was supposed to do four, but it. Um, it was for Radio One, you know. It, uh, Joe, Joe Riley or something. Or? It's um, Zane Lowe is the show, and and uh, I've known him for a, for a few years, doing interviews with him. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the format tends to, tends to be a band where the band shows up. Audio Slave's done where you show up and you have to set up all your equipment and then do a sound check and check the drums and the bass and this and that. And so you get about five hours to do it. Yeah. And, um, you only and, then, had you your and then you play your songs and then uh, and but if you just show up with an acoustic guitar, you have five hours. I don't have anything else to do. So I like I think I took a nap because I had jet lag for like I slept for an hour and then got did like ten or eleven songs. Um, Which one did you do? I haven't heard them. And you heard you heard them on the internet. I heard like you you just came home and then you saw it on the internet or something. Was it right? Actually, right. No, it was just like night before last. While we were out here on the road, I've seen something I did already in Germany, and I did, I did uh, acoustic live, you know, for the internet. I did one in New York, one in a couple different ones in Los Angeles, a couple in Germany. Um, and what else have I done? I've done a lot recently, but it's, yeah, it's really great to be able to 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 do that. You know, just to, it's f the the funny part is that technically technically what I'm doing is the same type of entertainment that people would have been listening to a thousand years ago, but technically the way people are getting to see it now is like via the internet which is like crazy technology wouldn't have even dreamed possible yeah. so it's weird it's like the the way people are getting their information getting their music is is like incredibly like so technically modern that fast it's also. it's and it's so fast it's like beyond what they were like pretending to do in star trek but the actual entertainment is a guy uh, sitting on a chair with an acoustic guitar and no amplification singing and playing a song. So what they want to see yeah. after they go through the computer is what they would have wanted to see a thousand years ago. It's really, there's a, some lesson in there somewhere that will be lost on us. Yeah. What <laughs> kind we of head into the, the destruction of humanity, the ultimate <laughs> extinction of humanity. Uh, probably not. I think it's only the progression of humanity now because everything is going faster. Hey, but what, what kind of songs did you play? Um, so I, audio slave. I played. Uh, I played. Uh, you played old played songs some too. Some songs from every Audio Slave record. Um, a few Soundgarden songs. Um, Which one do you prefer from Soundgarden songs to play? Oh, like like know. like Seasons, for instance. Do you do you play that's that? That's not song? a Soundgarden song, actually. That was a, that's a Chris Cornell all by himself song, mm. and I haven't played that song in a long time. Um, I had to learn that. Really, it's like a really wicked song still. Yeah, that song. I'd like to play that song. I play a lot of like Temple of the Dog songs and of um, one or two songs from my solo record. I like to play, um, you know, some Soundgarden songs. I played Blow Up the Outside World yesterday, All right. which isn't you know not one I normally do on an acoustic guitar, but it works. You yeah. can try it out on that moment itself, or yeah, really, yeah. You just start and you will just see. You've written it probably, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know the chords. <laughs> um, a few cover songs, a couple interesting cover songs I've never done before. Um, From your favorite artists? Yeah, or just like songs that I make my own. You know, that aren't necessarily my favorite artists. No Pussycat Dolls or something. I wouldn't. I don't even know what Pussycat Dolls sound like. Okay. I don't that's know good. one song. Um, <laughs> but that's yeah, that's kind of normal for me. Yeah. I think you know, it's it's oddly enough, there are like pop groups that would come and go but I'll hear a song and I'll remember it mm -hmm. and there are pop groups that come and go and I'll hear a song and I could hear it 20 times and not be able to sing it to you I don't know what it sounds like but what pop song nowadays do you like okay it sticks in my head it's a new cool song um, there are not many bands nowadays who are really good. no like the, the the like new Justin Timberlake song I kind of remember you know it's like Sexy a good Bay. song yeah, yeah. Good but that guy his last record too um 
the the song "Cry Me a River." The first time I heard that, it's like okay, it's a pop music, but I didn't. It's good songwriting. I didn't forget the song. Um, but also, you know, like the like I think Christina Aguilera had some good songs. I don't know. I mean, I don't think she writes them, but I would remember them. And whereas Britney Spears, I don't honestly can't say I remember a single song that she's ever done. Hmm. Um, and that's not judging whether they're good or bad. I'm just saying I can't remember them. No, exactly. And why is that? Because I actually have a really good memory for music. Usually, hmm. um, I write songs in my head. I don't even. I don't even um, like record them to remember them. I just, really, you yeah. just just remember them. Yeah. And so it's strange to me when I hear a song that's a hit song five, ten times, and I I don't know what it is. You know, I can't remember yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> weird, isn't it? It's very weird. Also, the new uh, Audio Slave album, uh, Revelations, a great record, very good Thank production, you. great melody lines, again, I think a bit more progressive also in your singing-wise, because you need you try more like um, double singing and double voices more than mm -hmm. the other records. Did you write some songs your own way, your old-fashioned way, on your guitar? Oh, the... the this on this album. record there's one song I wrote all of it nothing left to say but goodbye and the rest of it it's the same as usual I, there's two songs one or two songs on the last record that I did alone one maybe I can't remember no there's two and and um, but still it's not like for example with Soundgarden I would record a demo at home and then bring a tape in and like you know just more bas work? basically say you know if you want to do this song we'll do it this way otherwise if you don't want to do this song we won't do it um, and with Audio Slave it's it, even though I had written it I would still just kind of show them the song we work it out as a band um, and so that not having to demo a song is less certainly less work um, but no I think all three records have really been done the same way with Audio Slave where we, we we write them together. Music first, and, and then you're singing over like a bit of a hum, 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 and then you um, try to find the words. Well, the, 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 the melody has all happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll start playing a part. I sit, well, typically, someone will start playing a part. Brad or, or Brad and Tom or Brad and Tim start playing a, a, you know, a riff or a part or chords or whatever. And then they'll all start kind of work on it, and I just sit on the couch like this in front of the band, and I don't say or do anything. I just sit there, Watch and I fight the urge to say anything, because I usually want to say something right away, um, and I don't say anything because it, you know, it will go somewhere, and they'll be working on it and changing things, and I don't do anything, and then I'll sort of formulate in my head what what I think the song is inside whatever it is they're doing. I'll hear something and I'll then and I'll still wait a good half hour or so and and think about a vocal melody. And then I'll then I will at some point get up and say, Could you please try to do this yeah. and do that that way and repeat it. And then once they do that then I'll start singing what I think is the right thing over it. And that's that's usually the way it works. The, the way it works, yeah. yeah. Well, was it easier this time for, for you? Because, you, you, you know, last, last year you got a record, uh -huh. two years before that, you, you wrote like 30 songs, and now maybe, how, how much this time? How many songs? Um, well, some of the songs on this record were, were left over from the period that we wrote for Out of Exile. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually didn't write as many brand new songs for this record. So in, that's, in that way, it was easier. Um, but it's the same. I mean, you know, since we started as a band, it's been it's been pretty much the same. Our ability to to go into a room and write a song. Did you expect that that you had so much success with this band? Um, in the beginning. In the when we were writing songs for the first record, yeah, I felt personally like this is a band that I think could have a lot of success. And you know, I would I didn't I didn't count on. It. I didn't think that because I felt that it would be true. Because I don't feel like I know. Um, I don't think that I'm really in touch with what a large group of people are going to like and I, I just I a never, feeling for yeah, yourself yeah it was a feeling I felt like they should mm. you know like <laughs> they sh people should like this because I do and uh, you know I felt like maybe I could be wrong but th that was my feeling um, and you know it's like I don't think ever in my career I've had a, a, a record where it's that kind of over the top, you know, unanimously loved worldwide record that sells 10 million. You know, that hasn't happened. But 5 million has happened, 6 million has happened, and that's a lot. Yeah. And that's without having like, like uh, hit radio kind of songs. Um, totally not, but only like very alternative and, 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 and college radio stuff, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's an interesting. And fans from earlier on and still now.
Yeah, for sure. And it's an interesting position to to manage, to maintain, you know, to be, to have um, a pretty large degree of success without being like a pop idol. Um, and, and uh, you know, it, it's that's without saying, you know, that I can say I'm really in touch with, with what could be hugely popular. But I think that being um, inspired by whatever it is the, that I do or we do as a band means that someone out there will probably be inspired by it too. And that's the rule I've always kind of gone by. And it tends to be true. Mm, yeah. hey, lyric-wise, for to make it sure, um, lyric-wise is quite personal, I think, on this record. Uh, for instance, original Fire, um, mm -hmm. Fire's died and gone. Um, mm -hmm. you know, what do you mean by that? Like, how do you get into a song like that? Um, is it like the old the old energy you had like a band or that that song really is about is a sort of a tribute to where I come from and mm -hmm. Seattle scene and and which is long since over you know the the people that made that happen are are a lot of them aren't there anymore or doing different things you know or, but everybody still plays music and um, and so it's a tribute to, you know to to that period. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you miss it? Justin, that I don't take it for granted, but it's also, um, and I'm also stating in the song that I still feel the same way about music now, and I still have the same inspiration, and I still approach it the same way. Yeah, but do you miss that time? Because it was quite a heavy time and, and cool time, too. Well, I think, um, you know, the, the time that I'm singing about in the song is before anybody really outside of Seattle even knew about it. Um, You know, once it's like 1990, 1991, that's that's not even the scene that I'm thinking about. By then, it's already kind of over. It's already before. sort of a media frenzy. Yeah, I'm talking about before anybody had record deals. Yeah. From so 84 to 87, you know, that's that's that period where, um, you know, people weren't even making records. It was just live shows, and your fans were your friends from other bands, you know. Um, the period where it was like I saw Green River's first show ever and and to me that you know my memory of it, that's still new you know that was a new band um, do you feel that now they were a three piece and I was like this is a band Green River this is their first show wow that was a really wild it was different I've never seen anything like it um, do you have a feeling like that sometimes still or is it totally over I I I don't have a feeling like that when it comes to you know attaching it to Um, a place where I grew up, you know, when I attach it to something geographically. But when it comes to music, yeah, I think right now is is a very similar period in terms of rock music as it was in in the mid '80s um, in the United States with with a very vibrant, very healthy indie rock scene um, or something that w that was underground and you know, the word underground have you know you heard that a lot oh, they're an underground band yeah, yeah, yeah. an underground band that's cliche yeah, yeah yeah Soundgarden got letter letters of rejection from record labels saying you know you're you're underground. too underground <laughs> and, and, okay whatever the f that's supposed to mean yeah. um, you know th that was also before alternative became a music genre um, alternative basically meant any kind of music that's not on pop hit radio yeah. Um, then alternative became kind of a style um, where it, it tended to be sort of jangly guitars and and nothing that would be considered aggressive or or inherently male you know mm. um, and uh, it was before all of that but I, I still feel I feel that there's a vibrant rock scene going on right now that's been going on for a while and it's just not um, what's your favorite on this moment it's not um, I think like the, <clears throat> the the last white stripes record sort of sums up in my opinion like everything that's great about it hmm. um, the the recordings the the freshness the playfulness of it the the inspiration um, the, the fact that like you take it apart put it back together it's just like only two people in a band just even that yeah. looking at it that way is a different approach after one question when can we expect you back here because uh, we think we want to see you all playing soon um, yeah I don't know we, we have plans we don't have any concrete plans but sometime next year next year yeah All right. tonight which songs are you going to play pardon me which songs are you going to play acoustic oh I have no idea no <laughs> No. you're going to sit there and you'll see yeah oh. Yeah. I'll think about it later <laughs> <laughs> cool man thank you so much All right. thank you cool.